Hey everybody, Eric here. And today I want to share with you my process for taking a construction detail. So basically something that you would be used to seeing in 2D. We've already showed a video about how to make a detail 3D, but I want to show you here how to style it to get it just right for the look that you want here in layout. <music> So with construction details, I think if you're like me and you learned CAD first before moving into SketchUp, then you're probably used to seeing, you know, very simple line work, black and white, usually section cuts or plans or something like that. It's simple because a construction detail usually has to show only the information that you want it to show, meaning that like you want to see what's happening underground, you want to see how the rebar is spaced. It's important to show things that sort of aren't necessarily part of the final construction. It's just to communicate how something's going to get built. So that said, the idea of bringing in a 3D construction detail into both SketchUp from SketchUp into layout gives us a lot of possibilities to play with how we want to visually communicate that idea with whoever it is, whether that's the client to get them sold on it, or whether that's a colleague, or whether that is ultimately the contractor. So let's take a look at that process right now. So I'm in layout now. This is part of a, I'm gonna say is part of a larger live stream that I did recently. So if I will link in the description, he, you know, basically how this model was built and how this layout sheet was set up. So I'm not gonna go into super detail here, but I do wanna kind of recreate parts of that process that came out, which was really kind of fun. So you can see here, I've got multiple SketchUp files, um, multiple SketchUp models linked. You see, I've got the overall sort of process, uh, the overall plan to show where this planter wall stair condition would, would sort of happen. You know, this house as it steps down from an upper terrace to a lower terrace. And then I've got just part of that planter wall because again, the walls are gonna be different lengths and then the stairs will be different lengths depending on where that shows up. That's the context of what we're working with. We're going to build this, sort of rebuild parts of this now. But let's start, like most things, before we get to layout, we usually start in SketchUp. If you didn't see that other video, go ahead and check the playlist. There was one earlier this week about how I sort of built, uh, approached building this. So if I kind of zoom into this particular stair set, you can see that I have a very simple planter wall. I can turn the section cut on and off. You can see I've got some pieces now. There's a little bit of information missing. There's some rebar. So that would happen again in layout. I wouldn't probably model the rebar. I would just show it as a dashed line. So there's definitely some things like this gets me to about, I don't know, about 90% way through. And now it's time to take this to complete that final step. I've also got here in SketchUp. Now this is a CBT, stands for color by tag. I put some, there's a video, uh, I've done a video on this, how to do this, but basically you can apply textures to your color overrides. So basically when I turn color by tag on and off, it actually overrides it with these cool kind of schematic or diagrammatic looking textures as opposed to something more realistic. So I have some options as to whether I want to show this sort of more in that kind of CAD style or whether I want to show this sort of more full detail. Again, that's an aesthetic preference. I just wanted to kind of make sure you understood that we have some options. So with that context sort of behind us, let's pop back into layout. And I'm going to just, let's see here, I'm going to copy one of these because I'm going to need a starting point and let's go to a blank page. So here's my plan view. Again, it shows where we want to tell the story about what's happening here in this zone. If I wanted to kind of make that a little bit more apparent. I could really quickly put something like a transparent or opaque fill, just to kind of highlight that a little bit better. There you go. We all know where we're working now. So I'm going to paste this in place and you'll notice in this SketchUp model, if I go back there for a second, I really don't have any scenes. These are just working scenes. So it's just kind of going back and forth from my reference to what it looks like when it has a in full color and to what it looks like stylistically in black and white. But there's really no um, scene set up for what I want to display later. And I don't really need to because here in layout, I can sort of decide the scene if I press reset everything. I'm just going to go reset, make sure that everything is back to how it was when it first brought it in. I can then decide stylistically what I want to override. And I can also decide how I want to. So let's pull, I'm going to pull this SketchUp model pane off to the side for one second, just so we can focus on this. So from here, because um, I don't have scenes set up, that's okay. I can start with a top view. 
So a top view would be the plan view. And in this case, what I want to do is make sure ortho is set. And I also want to look at this idea is that there's a section cut here. So now that section cut works for when we're doing an elevation or a section, but in this case, I don't want that. So what I would do is switch to a style, whether that's color or black and white, it doesn't really matter. It's just really making sure that um, we have a style setup that shows section cuts and a style that shows no section cuts. So here I also noticed that my plants don't really work that well in, in they're, they're basically face me plants. And so when you look down on them, they're flat, they're billboards. So I kind of thought ahead and I actually have two tags. So if I go into my SketchUp model and under, not under style, but under tags, I can turn off the one that shows them in basically in elevation and turn on the one that shows them in plan view. So that's like a plan view symbol. Now, same thing here, uh, we're moving on on how to show this. If I know that I that this, this is only a typical condition, I can basically come in here and just cut the viewport off. And before I actually finalize the viewport, I should check the scale. It's not set to a fixed scale, so that's probably good. I could go one fourth inch if I want it kind of small, or I could push this up to one half inch if I wanted to show this very big on a page, or maybe, for example, this works best at three eighths inch equals one foot. So we want to make sure that that scale is set before we get too far along in the um, in the diagramming process or in the notation process. So here, there we go. Let's just switch that back. I'm going to switch that back to the color style just because I think it's just easier for me to see what's going on at this point. And then I also have on my tags a person. I put the people on its own tag. So again, you can get rid of that. So here we go. I can just really quickly with the line tool come in here and make one of those break lines. So this is just kind of a section break line. Now I might want not want that dashed, probably want to fill there, make that white. I can just use the line tool instead and just kind of extend that out. And same thing, extend that out. So this first thing just basically shows that, hey, this is going to mean that this plan view continues, right? So if I wanted to copy that, I can copy that, paste it, rotate it 180 degrees, and then lift that, and then put that one there. Okay, you can see now it's ready for me to annotate. I can put a label on it. If I need to put, um, say what this is, I can come over here. And what's really cool about this is depending on how you built your model again, what I love about layout is I can just grab that. And then depending on whether it has a name, it says steel handrail. It does, that's cool. I actually thought ahead. So I'm gonna click on that and it's gonna see it's pulling auto text. And so I'm just, you know, that just helps me, saves me a little bit of time. So that's that first one. And I'm not gonna do, you know, all of them. Like I said, I kind of did this process in a live stream, but let's do one more. I can take this one. I've already got it to scale. I just paste it basically in place and sits right on top. I'm gonna leave everything else alone and I'm going to change the standard view to front. So front means now I'm looking straight at it. And the cool thing about doing that by pasting in place is that I know that this aligns because I'm just changing the camera the standard view, I'm not changing the camera angle using scenes. So if I, for example, you can see if I line this up, my handrail lines up as it should and sort of this, everything else sort of touches exactly where it needs to be, which is perfect because now the two of them speak to each other. And again, if I'm out of space, I just have to sort of move some things around. Yeah, okay, there we go, it's starting to work. Now here I turn my plant off. Remember I have my 2D symbol because I'm looking at it in plan view. This is where I just go back in and I just turn that plant symbol, that 2D one, and I'm gonna go back to the face me. And this is where we get to have a little bit of fun. If you decide you want to fade some things, we can stack viewports. For example, if I copied this one and pasted this viewport, now I've got two viewports on top of each other. One of those, I might sit there and do something like a faded. I might fade the plants back. And then on this one, I just turn those plants off. And you can see here, if I put this back on top and I wanna make sure I have the one with the section cut showing, not the one without the section cut. And there it is. What's really cool about that is that, you know, just using those stacked viewports, I can really create this faded look. 
Of course, there's other ways to achieve that as well using some transparent planes, but I like that because again, if I make a change to my model, if I go back into SketchUp and I make a change to my model, it's going to change it everywhere. So again, I put that same label and line that up. It's going to ask me group name. Yes, I'm happy with that steel handrail. There you go. So if I go back to where we started with the final version here, you can see that it's really up to you to decide how you want to set up your SketchUp model, how much detail you want to model in, and then of course, how many things need to come in on top of the SketchUp model, for example, with annotations and line types and graphics to really bring the idea that you're trying to convey home and make that just as clear and kind of cool as possible. So I'm going to wrap up there. Obviously, I could keep going. I love playing around in layout. I love when I discover something new. I love it when I find something that works and I just kind of put that in my head and I say, OK, I don't have a need for that right now, but park that. I'm going to use that when the time comes. And so this is just one of those things where it's like, will you always need to show this in, in 3D like this? Maybe not. A 2D section may com convey the idea just as well. But I love that I can get three or four different details from just one small piece of my SketchUp model. And then, of course, I can style it and annotate it to get it, uh, again, to convey exactly what I want. So I'm going to let you go there. I'm going to say thanks, as always, for watching. Right, Thumbs up if you learned something new. Um, give us that like. And then if you haven't already subscribed, why not? Get some cool notifications. And especially with our live streams, you'll uh, get notified when we go live every Friday. So thank you very much for tuning in. I will see you next time.